Olympics uh, for all sorts of sports, Mike. Uh, but today, the focus is on the world's best cross-country skiers. And a real test it is, Patrick. Uh, we're looking at the Norwegian coaches there. They've done a, a fantastic job in uh, well, the German uh, wax technicians now. Fantastic job, all the technicians for their teams throughout the last 10 days. Well, it's the 10th day of the Tour de Ski and the final race, the eighth race of the Tour. Well, the women have already done their bits, and uh, if you were with us, uh, I think you will have been impressed by what you saw. Let's have a, a little reminder of how things went in the final stage of the women's tour de ski. Well, it was a very tough day. We didn't really know which way it was going to go, but when it comes to climbing, the lady in the middle, Therese Johaug, had 30... Nine seconds deficit, she absorbed that quickly and then went on to take another minute, minute and a half out of Oosberg. Not just the trophy, but a 100,000 Swiss francs in her pocket for that victory. Oosberg, just 57,000 uh, uh, Swiss francs in her pocket. And well, Feng in third place. This... Uh the climb. There you see the standings for Therese Johaug. Uh, although she's beaten Usberg, Mike Usberg much better climbing than we've seen in the past. There were four and a half minutes between them last time. They both came up the Alpchamis, so she's made ground there. But this tour has been the making of Usberg. Absolutely, the making. She wasn't a renowned a distance racer. She's 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 landed now as a distance racer, and to be pushing the the might of Therese Johaug to the final day, to be ahead of her in the final day, I thought was incredible. And here's the result in terms of world. Cup rankings, of course, 400 points going to the winner, and suddenly a slim lead of 60 points is boosted to 189. Osberg got so close. Could be that be the factor that swings the season back in favour of, of Therese Johau? But after seven races, we thought no one was going to get anywhere near her. So there, it is still a two-horse race in the women's tour. It is, and Osberg uh, only picking up 320 points as, as opposed to Therese's 400. And the two Americans, Mike Diggins, uh, of course, and uh, 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 <laughs> and Bjornsson doing well, 12th and 13th, but uh, Sophie Caldwell getting a win. So Deans and Caldwell both getting victories on the Tour de Ski. That is crucially important for them. I, and, uh, you know, it's all been about Keegan Randall over recent years, but suddenly the rest of the team are starting to prove themselves. And I know our American viewers really enjoying the success of their, oh, their girls. Very much. And, and it, it has been a bit of a one nation today, domination here. And it was brilliant to see those two American wins and uh, most of the rest of the time Norway in the women's field on the podium. So just five minutes or so to go before the start of the final leg of the men's and it will be Martin Jonsrud Sumbi who is first away. The temperature's still the wrong side of freezing, but the track's uh, hardening up overnight, so it will be a fairly quick route, usually just over the 30-minute mark. If they get sub-30, that would be a fantastic run. Look at the approach towards the hill. It's gradually downhill. It allows for some very fast, very aggressive skiing, but then you pay the price when you come to the bottom of the Alp Chamis. Mike, describe just how hard that climb is. It's hard to express it. It's 3.6 meters. Uh, it's 3.6 kilometers in track length but you're climbing over 425 meters so uh, 100 meters per kilometer uh, uh, and more 125 per kilometer well, here are the men who've managed to conquer it. Angra, of course, first, then Lukas Bauer, the first of his two victories in 2008. Dario Colonia, the man, three faces, three wins. Uh, but he's looked as though he's struggling this year. No one has won it three years in succession. Sunbi will do today. Nothing is going to stop Martin Jonsrud Sunbi. And it took seven years. The domination of Norwegians in cross-country skiing is famous, but it took them seven years to get a win. And I think you're right. It'll be another face of Sunbi there for 216. What has changed? Are the Norwegians that much stronger or are the rest of the world that much weaker? Well, look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> eight Norwegians in the top ten. Uh, domination isn't always a good thing in a sport. And I think uh, even the FIS would say, how do we... You can't say to Norway, how do we slow the Norwegians down? You've got to say, how do we bring <laughs> everyone else up? There's money involved. You've got, you need a good backup team. And I think it's fair to say the Norwegian experts and the finance they put into waxing and preparation it pay off. We saw uh, Jontrud Sumbi. We'll see it in a minute. 
minute. Uh, how he raced yesterday and the skis were a, ma a major factor. Well, we, we've uh, seen the Norwegians get the waxing wrong before, and there was all hell uh, broke loose when they did in Sochi in 2014. You might just have picked up the Union Jack there, uh, Muzzy, Andrew Musgrave, lying in 44th position. It's still a very good effort, but he's not on the sort of form that saw him into 20th place last year. So the early starters ready to go. Now, it's not a question of who wins, surely, Mike. It's a question of who comes second. Can Petter Norta do enough to shake off the opposition? He's got Polteran in, a classic specialist starting just behind him. And Ustiagov, who goes at 2.56, is there as well, only five seconds down. So Sumbi on his own. And I suspect he might well have covered uh, 1,200 metres before anyone else starts. We've never seen it. This is the 10th outing of the, off the Tour de Ski. We've never seen a margin of 251 that's what he's got ahead of second place it's quite amazing and um, then it is tight after that from Pedro Nortug at 251 then only 301 back to fifth place so that is a major scrap for second place do you think Sumbi just enjoys it a Sunday stroll I think he does uh, he's got such a strong mind focus uh, he was so annoyed after his 22nd place uh, on Wednesday and Oberstorf that yesterday he said everything about yesterday the same race a classic 15 must start he wanted to prove that that bad day was not going to happen again and of course took the victory yesterday so strong mentally well he is not skiing with the intensity that we saw from Usberg and Johaug he uh, I think just enjoying that two minute 51 lead and then he'll make sure that he's in good condition when he hits the bottom of the climb I think that might be the optimum optimal way to race this we've never seen anyone really attack the bottom and then fly up the hill in the men's we have in the women's because Johaug did it this morning but we've never seen a man go a hundred percent on the flat and still be able to maintain the pace on the climb we have seen a man go well 100% many times in the flat that's better <laughs> Nortug yeah he was catching Helner one year but but didn't work out on the climb how important for Nortug to get his fifth second place oh I think that that's going to be his focus but he stated before, you know at the beginning of the tour that he'll never win it and I suppose he's, he's a realistic person he analyzes there he is analyzes everything to do with the sport and he knows that his body weight, his lack of climbing ability reduces his chances of a victory you didn't mention his technique it's an unusual. I'm absolutely convinced his technique. His hips are so much further back than Sunbi's that it's just not as efficient on those climbs. On the flat, it works beautifully. He's got such quick arm action, but on the steep climbs, uh, surely you have to have the hips a little bit further forward so you you get that efficiency transmission. Do, do you know what? It's uh, I haven't really thought that one through, but yeah, he's got this big long. We'll see it on the climb. See this short, choppy stride here that Yontrud Sunbi has, not staying too long on the right ski not staying too long on the left it's tempo Peter Nortug is twice as long in the glide on each leg and the upper body varies in position angle of attack with uh, with Nortug far more than it does with Sunbi so we'll, we can analyze that when they get to the climb uh, they've got a bit of work to do before then Ustia Goff number four looks uh, hungry I think he'll have his mind on runners up place today but he's still got Croc behind him uh, from Norway Tonseth is there from Norway Sjurota who's had a very good climb in the past is there for Norway as well so uh, this is difficult to call. Actually, two years ago, Surota was uh, the second fastest climber with a time of 32.05, only three seconds slower than Jesperson, his teammate. So this is the battle for the podium. One of these men is going to lose out. Surprise! I was surprisingly the the big Kazakh, of course, uh, Paul Ryan, and he's a good climber. He's six foot four, and he's not a light uh, a light athlete, but he really can climb well. Fastest climbing time last year went to Roland Clara of Italy, 29.13. He gained a, a whole load of places with that effort. Maurice Magnifica, another man who climbs well for France. He's had mixed results, Magnifica, this season. A bit slow to get going in the Tour, which was a shame. And uh, probably the reason that uh, we haven't featured him much. 
Andrew Musgrave starting number 44. Mike, can he gain a few places? I was looking at that last night. His best wish, I think it would be five places. Um, but it, we'll have to wait and see. Look at this already. Nortuk saying, no, I don't want to do any leading. Uh, Paul Ryan, <laughs> come on. <laughs> He's stopping. He's letting everyone pass. Uh, he just does uh, things slightly differently, doesn't he? And, and, I, and I know sometimes you don't approve of his <laughs> antics, but he, he, he has his game plan and he's quite entitled to race his own race, his own game plan. Uh, and he knows that if he leads, he's got no chance. That's changed the shape there. He was he took it out quite fast and now it's up to Ustigov. That will tire out Ustigov. And, and what a contrast to last year where Pedernotto went for the first 5K absolutely flat out and then tried to hang on. Of course, uh, Nortug finishing second last year, just ahead of Beloff. That was a good battle. Seven is Surota, comes from Voss. Don't know if any of you have been there. It rains a bit in Voss, but it's a beautiful area just off the west coast, not far from Bergen. And they've got midges just like up in the Highlands. They have great <laughs> mountains, great places as well. Lots of skiing opportunity and some fantastic facilities. The, the tour always opens our eyes to new and talented athletes, and I think that's true for Iverson. He's, he really has landed as well. Tenth rank at this stage is brilliant for a young guy. Yeah, he's sprinting well. He's doing classic well. Now, I know there's a prize, Mike, for anyone who can win all eight stages of the Tour de Ski, <laughs> and it's a measly, what, 20,000 Swiss francs? 24, I it's think. Not, it's it's, it's a... never, surely it's never going to be done. So they could offer a, a really glamorous prize uh, with no real danger of it ever being taken. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be any risk although the way Yontrud Sumbi started uh, I know he's not a sprinter yes he came six but the rest of his domination early part of the season you wouldn't have you could have expected maybe he'd get six out of eight he's got three and remember last year he won it with not even getting one stage uh, win. well the, the only chance as we watch uh, this is Alex Harvey of uh, Canada Number 12, uh, nice to see that he's doing the final stages. He pulled out uh, the penultimate stage. I think he missed the penultimate stage as well last year. But on, on that occasion, everyone was concerned about the World Championships. They did not want this climb in the legs before they went up to Sweden. It's a strange, it's a difficult decision, isn't it? You've had uh, seven extremely tiring races in, in nine days. And now you've got this phenomenal climb just to tower you a bit more. Legkov 13 in danger of picking up a penalty for going early. Beloff uh, starting uh, just at 6.20. I think Legkov had forgotten what time he was meant to leave. He was actually meant to go four seconds clear of Beloff. Morris Magnificar, away he goes. Keep an eye on him. He could get himself a World Cup win today if he produces the fastest time on this particular leg. I don't know, something happened on the start line uh, there, Patrick, because Beloff should have only been four seconds ahead of Magnificar, but Magnificat was something like eight, nine seconds. Did Belov jump the gun? I didn't see. Well, Belov might have gone when Legkov was supposed to and Legkov uh, the other way around. We're not quite sure what, what happened there, but uh, if there is a penalty implied, we should see a little scrolling message down the bottom of the screen. Number six, Didrik Tonseth. He's been solid, but it's difficult in the Norwegian team, isn't it, Mike, uh, to make a name for yourself when you have the likes of Nortug and Sumbi and Finhagen Kroc, who's look, he's he's been really impressive this year as well. Race leader. Still uh, puffing and panting a bit. <laughs> he is, that's what I thought. But he's beautifully smooth on the skis. Look at the balance. Long poles, big uh, arm lift at the front, and he... I know you're a fan of dropping the body weight down through the pole. It doesn't appear that he's doing that, but his timing is so good and his core strength is so good uh, that it, he's just making uh, his phenomenal effort look very easy. He, he does the same in a classic. He's so straight, so square, so well balanced on his skis. And in these soft conditions, flat ski is more important than usual. Very much so. And you'd, I've noticed as well, all, and, and in the women's race, all the athletes going for very much bigger, wider baskets on the end of their ski poles. It's so wet here at plus five degrees. I, I think... Just, I was just going to say, started 4.26. Seven behind so we'll uh, let you know who's making ground and who's losing ground uh, Sumbi started 251 clear of everyone 
And already, uh, Volterrein in leading that chase pack, losing a huge amount of time there, 3.07 yeah. behind. Yeah. And that's because nobody's wanting to take the lead in that chase group. No one wants to put in too much effort before the first climb, which opens up an opportunity for getting the best time on the climb. It may go to Sunbi, but I don't think Sunbi's going to break himself because he's still got the rest of the World Cup to think about. And, of course, they'll be back in action uh, next weekend with a sprint. And then in two weeks' time, the first of the distance races post-Tour de Ski. It's not long to recover. Alex Harvey again. Alex is in no man's land, really. He's got to, what he's got 30 seconds up to Huland, and then behind him, there's another, oh, another 30 seconds back to Legkov. So uh, that's why he's trying to push this early pace to make some kind of contact. There's Legkov and Belov. I think Belov must have uh, jumped the gun at the start there. Harvey started 5.50 behind Sunbi and everyone, to be honest, losing a bit of time. Holland started 5.21 behind. He's managed to hold his own against his teammate. Everson, actually, uh, I think probably the quickest. He's gained three seconds. Well, here are the masses, number 27, Tony Livers in the Swiss colours. No Dario Colonia, you might have noticed. Just hoping. We haven't seen the results uh, as yet, unless the hospital report has come in the last 10 minutes. Uh, having a check on that ankle. It's such a pity. Ankle or maybe even a, a tendon further up or a, a hamstring. They don't know, but he was in second place with 5Ks to go yesterday, looking so strong. And we did see him cornering at, at speed and, and tr almost tripping over. And I think that might have damaged his already damaged ankle, re-damaged it. And what a pity. A man who's won, won it uh, twice. Three times uh, Dario Colonia has taken the is. tour title. And he was... Legkov, of course, another man who's won the tour before. And Legkov started number 13, uh, 6 minutes 16. So he's not going to repeat his success of three years ago. Leg he was the last man to win it before Sumbi. Yeah, and Legkov's had a, a second place as well. Uh, that was the first time he tried out in the Tour de Ski three seasons and four seasons ago. Polteranin, look over his shoulder just to see where the rest are at Pedernorto. He's hitched a lift for this first stage. Fair or uh, unfair or sensible? No, it's sensible. He, he, he is the ultimate saver of energy. And in, in any racing, you need to go efficiently. And Pedernorto uh, absolutely knows how to master that and, and, and use a bit of slipstreaming. Well, having had a 27-second lead over Tonseth, he's now only got a 15, so that might be the price that Nortug pays. There's Andrew Musgrave, number 44. Let's hope he has a cracking day out there. Been a difficult season. A few ski problems. Actually, that, that left ski didn't seem to be gliding that well, to be honest. But uh, the, the, the British waxing team, they, they align themselves with the Norwegians, which is to, to the advantage of the Norwegians and, of course, to the British. Uh, generally, the preparation has been good. They've had a pro couple of problems with the classic races. Oh, it was a difficult day in Lenterheide. A lot of teams did, and, uh, and I think they did have a, a, a poor day on that particular day, ski-wise. Roto looking nice and smooth. He's paced this one well. He started 4.27, and he's not going to have lost much time to Sunbi, but crucially, he has made up a gap on, uh, he's made up a fair amount on Didrik Tonseth just ahead of him, but the margin still significant. Over a minute behind, 105 the margin between six and seven. What does Rota do? Does he hold on to his position or does he try and catch that group in front? Lots of World Cup points at stake. Four times the amount of World Cup points at stake today than we normally get in a World Cup race. So 400 for the winner, uh, 80 points less for second place, so 320 for second place. Oh, it's a huge hit of points, 400. And uh, once you carry that into the rest of your season, you set yourself up with a real good chance of taking the overall Crystal Globe. Everson just going through, he's got uh, Holland with him. Those two have been making ground on the race leaders. And certainly De Fabiani uh, is going to struggle to stay with their pace. Just going back to the points, Patrick, you know, you have 400 we mentioned for the win and then 320 second, 240 for third, only 200 for fourth. I mean, you're still at the sharp end. I think it's, it's a little loaded for the win. 
but you have to remember in each of the eight stages uh, when you win the individual race you only get 50 points as opposed to a hundred uh, so the, the 400 points that you would have got uh, just come at the end just to I think you've got to do it because you've got to encourage athletes to stay with the tour as long as possible even this year we've had quite a few withdrawals we have it's a huge we've had 40 withdrawals and 18 of them are on the second day out and out sprinters came for that first day so he Here we go, first section of the climb for Martin Jonsrud Sumbi and those behind are 316. He's pulling away from the rest of the field. Uh, I'm sure he'll get splits. There are plenty of Norwegian coaches out there. He'll know exactly what he's got. He's over a kilometre, he's over 1,200 metres clear of everyone. He's certainly not taking an easy ride. You can tell, see that by him foaming there, uh, and that's when he's at his, at his high-end push. Now, we go on about how hard this is, Mike, but you've done a fair bit of fell running. Is this any harder than the Ben Nevis race? I think it is in terms of the, le the way they're feeling coming into it. So you, they've just come off the back of those uh, one day off in the last, what, nine days, and t two days off and nine days of racing. And so I think that's a factor. But no, it's, it, I don't think it is as tough as, say, the Ben Nevis race or a lot of these Alpine fell races. There's one difference, though. On the Ben Nevis, unless you're on your hands and knees, you're only using your legs. Here, you're using your four main limbs, and of course, the torso plays a major part in power production. So your heart is being asked bigger questions in a, than in a fell run. In a fell run, it's, it's heart, lungs, and, and leg muscles. I can't absolutely can't disagree. But you know, what, where is pain? What is hard? They're, they're pushing themselves <laughs> as hard as they can here. But you're so right. Every muscle group in the body, even more so than rowing, because your weight's supported in rowing where they've used their legs and their arms, every muscle group used And the here. other factor is, Mike, this is about technique and it's about balance. And as you get more and more tired, the balance gets harder, the technique gets worse, and then the effort has to go up again. Oh, and all these little receptors through your ankle, through your balance, they, they become tired. You, your lower, lower legs become used and tired. So soon be away and clear. Over three minutes clear of Peter Nortug and Polteran in a new steer golf at the moment. Through 6.2 kilometers for Martin Jons Rutsumbi. He's nearly there. It's been a desperately hard tour. And something we should talk about, Mike, is the fact that both Sumbi and Johaug have had dips. They haven't been dominant throughout. And how well they've both come through those. It's a tough one to come through. And I think for the first time we saw Sumbi doubting himself. He had nothing to give, shaking his head, wondering what has happened to that brilliant early season form. But, but there is the sign of a champion when he comes back from that. Nice to see Nautic doing his share of the lead of the chasing group, but he's down in fourth place at the moment. Krog and Polteranen <laughs> have gone clear. In fact, it's Finhagen Krog in the black bib. I do apologize. There's Peter Nautic tucked in in third. No wonder I was surprised. Polteranen yeah, yeah. wearing three. We've got Ustiakov. This is going to be an almighty battle, isn't it, for the second place? Can you see Nautic winning a, 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 a close quarters battle on the on the Alchemies? Oh. He's, if he can be like a limpet as he, as he does, just hang on in there, yes, then it comes to the final 200, smooth terrain. I honestly think he could uh, challenge them from that point, but they're going to try and break him before that. Well, if, if, he, if he still has some double polling strength left at the top and he wins that one with a sprint, surely then you'll have to appreciate how good he is. Oh, I, I, I always appreciate how good he is. And you know what? By, by, by Nordic finishing today at the top of this climb, he's the only man to have completed all 10 of these Tour de Skis. And that, that's massive achievement from the age of 20, where he did so well. Ustiakov starting to make a move. Finhagen Kroc still looking very comfortable, but this is the easy stage of the climb. It gets steeper and steeper in the midsection and then eases off a little towards the top, but by that stage, you're almost a spent force. No problem for Sumbi as he starts to approach the uh, tougher section. 1.97 kilometers to go. This is a... Uh... This is Ibsen. No, no, of course, Shirota. it's uh, Shirota. Shirota. This is him on the 12% uh, percent gradient. Then it climbs up to 26.5 for a short, through, well, 200 meters. Then it goes to 14, then 24%. This is Everson leading his teammate, Nicholas Deerhaug. And I think that's De Fabiani of Italy tucked in behind. He's had a great tour, hasn't he, De Fabiani? Normally, it's, uh, it's uh, 
or all, always about De Cienta. And De Cienta's a man who climbs well. But De Fabiani has done fabulously well. He's got the under-23 uh, World Cup leaders bib. He's, it looks as though he's going to hold on for that for the whole season. I hope he hasn't overdone it. Uh, but I, I've been really impressed how, how much aggression, how much fight he's shown. He's done, and De Fabiani, in a sense, uh, advantage this this time around the 10th uh, Tour in that we've had quite a lot more classic racing. The two big distance races, a uh, classic. Holland now 5.45, uh, he's lost 24 seconds to the race leader, but really we could do with a stat that tells, tells us how far behind second place, because we know who's going to win this one, and this is where the battle for the honours really is, second and third will come from this group of four, unless we see uh, a little burst coming in from Tonseth just behind. If Tonseth could only make contact, if they would just hang up and let him join in, that would, uh, that would just spice it up even more. Now we can see how much flexion Nautic has in his hips on the climb, Mike. Uh, so the upper body, all, most people have a sort of an attacking angle with the upper body, but he, he, he flexes far more at the hip than most. I uh, hope we see another shot of that, and he has real good power through his non-lead side arm as well, Nautic. He forces his way through with his non-lead side. But... I would almost guarantee that if you were coaching and you had a little bit of video of Nautic and Sunbi, you would point to, to Sunbi as the perfect example of how to skate. I think you would. I think you would want to, to teach youngsters to more adopt that slightly more upright position that, that uh, Sunbi has. But is it something to do with Nautic's technique that enables him to have that tremendous change of pace? Or do you think that's just his mentality? I think by keeping lower, you can allow yourself, you've got better balance because you've got lower center of gravity and you can reach, you can be more reactive. If you're very upright, you, you can't stride out too deep or too far. And, and I think that helps this massive turn of pace. The cowbells ringing, the Swiss horns are at the top of the climb here in uh, Italy. There's uh, a great reception for who should ever come first, and Sumbi is heading towards it. And the uh, chase is now 3.23, so bit by bit, he's extending his lead. He's going to be able to change, shower, and... Uh, <laughs> Have a coffee. Yeah, print out his ticket for getting home again <laughs> by the time the rest have uh, finished. It's been an unbelievable display, but it hasn't been total domination. That uh, that 15k in Oberstdorf, he must have been concerned. He must have thought, am I going to recover in time for the next stage? Yeah, and, and do you know what's handed him a lot of this bonus time is he he read like Nortug always does. The place to earn your, your gains is on picking up the extra bonus seconds, and Jontrud Sumbi did that so well this year. Are you a fan of the bonus seconds? Do you think uh, it would be an interesting tour without any of them? It's super load, so the guy on form is then handed all these all these extra beautiful seconds, precious seconds, so you're handing the guy on form even more of an advantage. So I, I, would, like to, I would like to see some other way, maybe having the amount of bonus seconds. It's not always been the case that there's been someone strong enough to ski away from everyone else and hoover up the whole lot as Therese Johaug did early on that that was crucial for Therese Johaug those first three phases where she got all the bonuses and gave herself a decent margin otherwise uh, Usberg could have started a minute and a half ahead of her today and the thinking Patrick uh, initially was that yeah you, you can hoover up those bonus seconds in distance races which we have been doing but the sprinters will get all the bonus they didn't realize that you could sprint and be a distance racer Nortug is finished he is finished Ustia Goff has broken clear, clear. Finn Hagen Kroc staying with him. Kroc in the black bib. And uh, Nautic some 25, 30 oh. metres behind and hardly moving now. This is the 28%. This is the steepest part of the course. Well done, Ustia Goff, for reading that so well to, to smash the pace up this one. Well, here's the little move from Ustia Goff. He's been... Uh, a force all the way through doesn't matter whether it's sprint whether it's classic where whether it's freestyle he has always been there a thorn in the side of the Norwegians and today he could be the man that takes second place well when Pedro Nortug was 20 year old he came fourth could it be another fourth when he's 30 year old well he's going to have to beat Polterarnin to get fourth uh, I don't I can't see him getting on the podium this time round oh, there Off go come the glasses, glasses yeah <laughs> don't want to carry them you don't want to carry any extra weight but actually they're probably steaming up because his body temperature will be right up there Nortuk's done so well he's had a uh, one two, three, four seconds two thirds two fourths and his worst performance ever was an eighth
That's when he was 21 year old. Now, Therese Johaup's time, her finishing time, 33.53, but she started, what, 38 seconds after the clock had started. So that gives her a finishing time of 33.15. Last year, a time of 33.15 would have put a 12th in terms of the men's race up this hill. I suspect that Therese Johaup will be in the top 20 in terms of everyone today. She is totally outstanding. That light body weight that she has, and that phenomenal tempo. Now, here's a good battle, a really good battle. Crook uh, starting, well, that's not such a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> Ustiakov versus Crook. Polteran in ahead of Nortug cleanly for the first time. Those two battling it out for fourth and fifth. This is a tricky section, isn't it, Mike? The hairpins uh, up, you know, steep section, followed by a little bit of flat where you have to change your gear. And it's so important that you accelerate each time you go around the corner. But then the corners are quite technical, as we're seeing here from Sumbi. You have to change the side you leave. And nearly all the skiers have a favoured side. Oh, and you've got, you've got the gradient, you know, no less ever than 11%. Than and you're skating sideways along the hill. And as you say, you've got to carry that momentum into this next section. This is the a 28 the final steep 28 percent gradient for Sunbi. yeah there it is 28 percent and uh, oh at this stage a final hurt and then it gets a little easier to four percent and then the final climb 11 percent well here we go uh Bustikov, is he being taken by Finn Hagen Kroc, deciding that the steepest place is the place to go? It's a bold decision, oh. but it's where you can get away if you've got the energy reserves. I thought Finn Hagen Kroc looked as though he was finished uh, on the section a little bit lower down. His technique was all over the place. He's, he's, but... he's, he's, sorry, he's still got the 28 percent are coming up, and I, if Ustikov can read this well, he, if he just tries to get in closer. Well, this is the steep section that Sumbi is on. You, th you think Kroc might have just pushed it a little bit too early? I felt, but Ustigov needed to react a little stronger or he's going to lose him. And that, that, that must have been a Croc's uh, opinion, right? Break him now and I'll survive through the rest of it. Let's hope that Nortug puts up a fight here. Polteranin is not pulling away. What a great win Polteranin had in one of the classic races. Uh, good sprint with Everson. At 1 meter 93, uh, Polteranin and weighing uh, just, what, 84, 83 and a half kilos, 84 kilos. Much the same as uh, Pedro Norto. Oh, it, it's a real test. Now, the next section is crucial for Nortug in terms of getting into the top four. Sunbi is just about through the most brutal stage. They've turned out in numbers to see this man make the ascent of the Alchemies. And uh, the Norwegians are here as well, many of them coming down just to see the end of this. Some of them going on to the biathlon in uh, Rupolding. There's lots going on in this area over the next couple of weeks. But uh, Sunbi is something special, isn't he, Mike? And if, if we take the goodness Svans and and we take the Dario Colonias and we take the Bjorn Dailies. Where does he stand in your book? Do you know, right, he was a slow starter. He's only, he's only, he's only floated to the top over the last four years, really. He's been around the national team, but uh, he's found something special. For me right now, uh, he's up with, if not better than the best for the last two seasons. The, the only weakness is he doesn't medal much at the World Championships or the Olympic Games, and he wants to turn that around, he said. Well, he's going to have another World Championships next year in Lati, and then he'll have another Olympics, surely, in his legs, provided he keeps going, provided he avoids any injuries, and that's one of the best things about cross-country skiing, is it, it tends to cure injuries rather than create them. <laughs> and then when you've pushed like this over 10 days, eight, eight days, uh, in eight races, 10 days, he didn't come back last year to perform well at the World Championships. His best was a 10th. Just trying to pick up the sound of the horns, uh, almost being overpowered by the thousands of people that have made their way up to the top of the climb. And this is great. At year on year, we get more and more people up at the top, and it doesn't seem to matter what the weather is doing. Here's the race for second, and Kroc is still clear of Ustiagov, but Ustiagov now starts the steepest climb of all, and he really excelled on the first steep section, so maybe the Russian can come back into this one. But they now ski, like, like most of us do, Mike, after a 
couple of Ks of easy skiing. Whoa. It's nice to see that their technique is being tested. The only man who really hasn't changed a jot is Martin Jonsrud Sumbi. Compared to Skishur Rota there, uh, sorry, uh, Croc there, uh, whose head is going all over the place, Martin Jonsrud Sumbi was completely composed. not wasting any upper body movement and I think Ustigov, this is where I thought Ustigov might sh punch back but he's got no punch left. Well maybe that's why Kroc went early, he thought uh, he couldn't afford to have the Russian on his tail hitting this part of the course, there's still a way to go he's got to hang in after this climb but he'll be relieved when he breaks to the left in 5 metres time and gets a little reprieve, it's a short one it's a temporary one and then the work starts all over again Look at this. Skate two at the top of the Alchemies. This, that is outrageous. This is Mr. Composed. He's just so strong. He's made himself in the gym. What a feeling for Sumbi. Three in a row. It hasn't been done before. A little bit of history being made. We've had plenty of history uh, over the course of this tour. And as you said, Mike, seven years before the Norwegians got a victory in this event, they now seem to have mastered it. Have, have, do you think they've put special focus on it, or do you think that they just have a phenomenally had a, a strong team for the last three years? I think they've, they've, they've bought into the concept of this. I think they, were, they didn't like it to begin with. They've totally bought into it. And we do have a much stronger Norwegian team now than back then, ten years ago. Oh, this has been a, a, a brilliant effort from Kroh. Thirty nineteen on the clock for Sumbi. He did a 32.49 two years ago. Last year he skied this leg in 29.24. The conditions today aren't quite as quick and the pressure is not the same. He's been on his own from the start. He started two minutes 50 clear. He has won the Tour de Ski for the third time in succession and he is the only man to have achieved that feat. A massive sense of relief, especially after the scare at the halfway stage. Unbeatable, really, oh. but even more credit should go his way for the way he's recovered from that de defeat in Oberstdorf. Oh, what, a, what an amazing comeback. 400 points, 100,000 Swiss francs. It's a good day for Sunbi. Another four minutes or so for Polteranin and Nortug before they can collapse on the snow at the top of the Alchemies. The battle for second place seems to have been decided. It will be a 1-2 for Norway, but not a 1-2-3 as it was in the women's race earlier on today. Polteranin looking good. Oh, that's going to be a great battle, isn't it? For, I know it's only for fourth or fifth, but Nortug will not want to give up on that. He'll want to show us what he can do in the closing stages. He's like a hunting hound, isn't he? He's just watching his prey watching the body language of Paul Turin in ahead of him and, and you just feel that Nortwick's going to win that little duel. Siorota started 427 behind, he's now 450 behind but he is a whole lot closer to Nortwick, Paul Turin and Ustiagov. just the margins too big at the start of the day, he was a minute 10 behind anyone coming off that start, start sheet the great thing with a lot of the Norwegians is they keep their balance and composure more than most of the teams so trained and conditioned as young athletes Well, a lot of uh, Sumbi's family coming down to see him make history. 26 54. Uh, that was, I think that was, that was, that, 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 yeah. that was uh, Sumbi's time. He has not made the top in 26 54. <laughs> that would have been uh, the, the record by some margin. Yeah, 30 47, of course, at the top. <laughs> I, thought, I thought all of a sudden we're getting the times. Uh, but this has been a, a brilliant performance from Croc. He's moved from fifth up into second. But uh, on that same note, he did only start 10 seconds behind uh, second place. And Nortug uh, just uh, stopped at a kilometre and let everyone through. So he didn't have to do a huge amount to catch that group. But take nothing away, he, he destroyed Ustiagov with a very smart move. And he's now got a lead of some 150 metres. Polteranin versus Nortug. They've had a few sprints already in this Tour de Ski. Who's going to come out on top on this one? Russia are going to be third. Will it be... Norway who get fourth or will Polteranin from Kazakhstan get in there?
I would love to see Paul Turain and uh, make a big break, a try and break, but you just feel he's never going to get rid of uh, Pedro Norto. Last little bit of effort coming in from Finn Hagen Krog. He's into the last 100 metres now, and he even digs deep. He knows he's a long way clear of Ustiakov. He can grab a, a flag and start the celebrations. Luckily, he uh, avoided the uh, advertising that took a tumble there. <laughs> that would have been a little bit of misfortune. But he takes second place. Norway, one and two. <laughs> and Finn Hagen Krog can hardly hold himself upright. He can. That is what it does to the world's fittest athletes. It destroys them. Ustikov recovers some of his composure in the closing stages. A solid tour de ski. Belov on the podium last year. Of course, Legkov winning the tour three years ago. But Ustikov this year, the best of the Russians, and only 3.43 off the pace. Third place. He would have settled for that at the start. Now, turn your attention back down the hill. We are waiting for the arrival of Polteranin and Nortuk, who have been locked together all the way through this final stage. The battle is for fourth and fifth. There aren't that many World Cup points at stake. There isn't that much money at stake, but there's a whole lot of pride. And guess who oh. it's going to go to? Petr Norto dancing his way up. And he keeps a careful eye on Polteranin just in case the Kazakh springs a surprise. But it's not going to happen. Norway, three in the top four. And I think they could end up with six or seven in the top ten, Mike. Yes, they certainly can with Turnset further down. You've got Deerhaug and, of course, Iverson Holland uh, chasing hard as well. Well, uh, well, I mean, we must say, great from Pedro Nortug. He's barely been outside fourth. In fact, only once in ten years he's been uh, outside fourth, and that was in the eighth position. No congratulations from uh, Sunbi at that stage. Maybe that will come later. Number seven, Surota, yet another Norwegian. So... Well, there you go. Just allowing him to get his breath back. You just, you, of course, uh, Polter Ryan knew what what uh, Nortuk's capable of, and I'm sure he expected this, but he tried to tire him out before he had any sting left. The only man to complete all 10 years and all stages of the Tour de Ski. He doesn't manage to get his fifth, second place. But he gets fourth today. It is an astonishing record that Petr Nortuk has on the Tour de Ski. And uh, even when he says he knows he will never win it, and it's this final leg that always stops him from winning. He's a big, heavy man. Power-to-weight ratio cannot get anywhere near Martin Jonsrud Sundby. And everyone who's met Martin Jonsrud Sundby, Mike, says the first thing they notice is how small he is. He is. Uh, in, in relation to Nortuk, seems a giant beside him. Uh, Paul Turain is a giant beside him. We saw that yesterday uh, in the photos at the end of the race when uh, Paul Turainen was third and Sumbi was first. And it helps him. I mean, uh, on these climbs, it certainly helps to have that smaller, lighter framework. So Norway, one, two, four, six, seven, eight at the moment. Here's De Fabiani. Is he going to get ninth place? He was ahead of Iverson last time we saw. You can just see Iverson in the background. But uh, great run. Best of the Italians by a long, long way. De Fabiani. And uh, he's done himself proud. We've seen the great uh, Giorgio Dicenta finishing well up here. There's Ibbotson just co completely dropping across the line when he's, his momentum eventually stops. A world of pain. The Fabiani actually did really well in Obersdorf, didn't he, uh, earlier on? Alex Harvey just about to finish for Canada behind Legkoff, the winner from three years ago. Legkoff... Uh, he won by a margin of 18 seconds over Dario Colonia, and Maxim Vinijanin was in third place that year. That was uh, the 2012-2013 Tour de Ski. There are your podium finishers. Sunbi in the middle, Finhagen Kroc in second on the left, and Ustyakov of Russia on the right. So, 22 wins for Sunbi now, and he's picked up a mass of them this season. At 31, as you say, Mike, he, he came 
into his prime fairly late in his career but it's 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 the methodical approach he has to training and he had some weaknesses he, he was never the tidy skier that Pedro Norte was he was a junior at the same time he tidied out a lot of these technical issues he wasn't very good in freestyle and skating fixed that in one summer and then changed he changed he thought right I can fix anything and now he can he can almost change and change any way any weakness that he has he can turn that around and technically probably the best on the freestyle circuit quite amazing he used to have that right knee that would always collapse in and never give him much balance and he, he turned it all around and that takes a lot of work at the same time as putting all the fitness training and uh, he's done a remarkable job he's certainly reaping the rewards uh, this year look at that 30 47 the time More success for the Norwegians and more success for Martin Jonsrud Sumbi. Three successive Tour de Ski titles. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the Tour de Ski this year. I think uh, we, we thought both tours were going to be a runaway victory. Sunby we had down to win. Johaug we had down to win. But Johaug had a whole lot more trouble than we were expecting. And, and Sunby didn't have it all his own way. No, he didn't. He was... T and it is lucky picking up these early bonus seconds and in the distance races to be so strong. And he needed that because he, was, he really was challenged on, on many, many days. Well, there's still plenty to finish uh, on the ground there. Number 17, that's Jonas Dobler of Germany. I think, is he the best of the Germans today? We'll do a little research. I know Andreas Katz wasn't far away. I think Katz might just have beaten Dobler, actually. We'll confirm that when we come back from this break. Yes, he and has. And when Martin Yax finishes for the Czech Republic there, number 18. Well, welcome back to the top of the Alp Chamis. The tour is over for the first 30 athletes. And uh, we've just heard a little interview. Hopefully, we'll be able to bring it to you with uh, Martin, Martin Jonsrud uh, Sundby. Here don't think he is. I'm surprised that you, uh, you got your third here. But uh, you had a nice little surprise when you got to the finish line, a bit of family. Yeah, that was, that was really a surprise. My wife and my family, my father and my sister. And they were waiting for me at the top today. And uh, I didn't know that, but... Uh, it's an amazing surprise. And, and you're in very good company now. You're, you're the only male to ever win it three times. Dario's won it three times, but he had an interruption. Justina's the only one to win it four, so you're uh, top of the class now, for sure, on the men's side. Maybe you see one more next year? Yeah, you know, when Justina has four, I have to go for five, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on a great number three, and uh, enjoy your time on top of the hill with the family and the team. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, he might have lost a little bit of weight over the last couple of weeks, but he has not lost his sense of humour. That's nice to see, isn't he? He's a nice personality. I know he's 100% he's skiing, my eating, sleeping, breathing skiing all the time. Quite intense. But, but that interview just gives you a little bit of insight into what he's really like. He's a nice guy, and, and he's, he's, you know, he congratulates everyone else. Uh, he, he's not big about what he does. He just keeps on plugging on and desperately wants to continue being the best in the world. Well, we'll look forward to seeing him in the next major championships because, as Mike pointed out, that's the one area that he hasn't really excelled. A dismal time in Fallon last year at the World Champs. Uh, he had to watch Petter Nortig steal all the gold from Sweden. Uh, maybe it will be a different story next time round. So that's it from... The Tour de Ski for 2016, it will be back next year, starting in the New Year period. Hope you join us for that, but plenty more cross-country skiing coming up as well. The World Cup gets underway again next weekend. We'll see you then. Goodbye for now.